acknowledgement is extended for this wonderful service. I'm the Venerable Catherine Otley. It's my pleasure to welcome you to worship along with Reverend Deacon Tamara Connors on this day where we celebrate the National Indigenous Day of Prayer. Long before the idea of Christ Church Bells Corners existed, long before the Anglican Diocese of Ottawa was born, in a time many of us find hard to imagine. Our ancestors arrived not to find an empty land, but a land that was already full of people, full of life, full of hope, and under the competent stewardship of the Anishinaabe Algonquin. This land remains their traditional territory, and we here today pray that we may continue to dwell here in ways that are respectful, peaceful, and trustworthy. May we be good stewards of this land together and face the atrocities of the past while working toward full reconciliation with all Indigenous people. Teach, Teach us, us, O God, God to, to walk softly on your lands, to use with care your gifts to us, and, and to love with tenderness all our sisters and brothers who have been born of your goodness. And our opening hymn is All Are Welcome.
God the creator, the strength of the people, we honor you. Listen to the thoughts of your people. We respect the truth of your spirit world and care for your creations to the east, to the south, to the west, and to the north. We honor you by deeds and not words. We live by the ways you have entrusted to us within the circle. Come, great spirit, as we gather Everyone in stand your name. if you can and turn to the east. We face east to your symbol, color gold, the breath of the morning sun, to your animal sign, the eagle which soars ever upward in the praise of the creator and calls us to do the same, to your words calling us to balance our minds in the spirit of humility and truth. We invoke your spirit of illumination and far-sighted vision the ways have shown us how to love you and each other with heart, mind, and soul. And we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Creator Spirit, Spirit come. come. We turn to the south, to your symbol color red, the hue of revelation, to your animal sign, the wolf, strong and enduring. The ways call us to balance of spirit and harmony with all nations, tribes, and clans. We invoke your wisdom, grace, and goodness of the ages. And we pray, Spirit, come, come holy, holy Creator. We turn to the West, to your symbol color black, the stillness of night to your sign, thunder mighty and bold, to your animal sign, the buffalo, the ways call us to balance emotions in the tradition of truth and honesty. We invoke your spirit ways of seeing within the community and its strength to endure. And we pray, Come, come, Holy, Holy Creator Spirit, Spirit come. come. We turn north to your symbol, color white, the truth of clarity and brightness, to your animal sign, the bear, which touches us with earthiness and all things growing, to your words calling us to balance of our body in the spirit, of a good sense and humor. We invoke your spirit of innocence, trust, and love. The ways open our eyes to the sacredness of each living thing. And we pray, come, come Holy Creator Spirit, Spirit come. come. We turn to complete the circle. To God, the creator, who cleanses the world with snow, wind, and rain. To the creator's son, Jesus the Christ, who fills us with mercy and loving embrace of all nations. And to the holy creator's spirit, who guides us. And we pray, come, come holy creator's creator spirit, spirit, come. come. Creator, you bent the earth like a bow until it was one round, shining planet. At your word, the land was drawn into mountains and tundra, forests and prairies. The waters were gathered together into rivers, lakes and seas. Many times when people crossed these seas from other lands, they broke the circle of your creation by their greed and violence, and they shattered the lives of others. Creator, renew the circle of the earth and turn the hearts of all people to one another, that they and all the earth may live and be drawn towards you through the love of Jesus Christ, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit 
in the circle of the Trinity, forever one. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, children. Welcome to this special service in which, with a loving God as our guide, we seek to celebrate National Indigenous Day of Prayer together as a way to support the Indigenous people in all that they are facing, past, present, and future. We also seek to support and further the ongoing work in reconciliation on a national level, as well as right here in our own parish. We are so glad that you have joined us let us open our hearts to God with prayer together. Loving God, creator, creator of all, maker and redeemer of history, you hold the pains and joys of our past, our present, our future. You open to us to the gifts of time and the possibilities of new beginnings and offer us the confidence to face our sin and loss with hope. Breathe in us the grace to trust in your loving forgiveness, that we may face our histories with courage. Guide us by your Holy Spirit in our walk of repentance as we turn to embrace the new life you have given to us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, from you every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our Amen. light. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks. Let us together say responsively Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the, and the firmament shows, shows his, his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and, and one, one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and, and their, their message to the ends of the world. world. In the deep, 
has he set a pavilion for the sun. It, it comes, comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. chamber. It rejoices like, like a champion to run its, its course. course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing, Nothing is, is hidden from, from its, its burning heat. heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The, the testimony, testimony of the, of the Lord, Lord is sure and gives, gives wisdom, wisdom to, to the innocent. innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The, the commandment, commandment of the Lord is clear and, and gives, gives light to, to the, the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let him not get dominion over me. Then I shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. Creator be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the, for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jewish authorities then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Standing here is okay? Yes. All right. You'll notice there's a bit more to the gospel than was printed because starting with, does this offend you without telling you what Jesus said that offended them, didn't make a lot of sense. 
Jesus is teaching, I am the bread of life we receive today and we don't really think about it. I am the bread of life, what a lovely analogy. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood does not die forever. I will abide in them and I will raise them up on the last day. But this was an incredibly difficult teaching for the Jewish people at his time and would be even today. To eat the flesh and drink the blood of a person that sounds like some kind of vampiric cannibal right. Does this offend you, asked Jesus? It did offend them. But he said that the words that I speak, what I'm communicating to you, is spirit and is life, everlasting life. However, we are told that many who had been following him at that point turned back. It was too difficult. Three years ago, today, on this day of National Prayer for Indigenous Sunday, I stood to speak with you in humility and with hope. I described the beginnings of our Anglican Church's journey of reconciliation, responding to the calls of action, especially to the specific calls to the churches that uh, ran residential schools, Anglican Church being one. And I talked then about a nascent formation of a self-governing Anglican Indigenous Church. Well, a lot of things have happened since three years ago. It's been a difficult two years. And not only with the pandemic and the inequity of the healthcare response for Indigenous people, but with the confirmation of the unmarked graves of residential school children, so many children are not survivors of residential school. It is true that not all the news over the last two years has been bad. This year, in February, was announced the creation, well, before this year, the creation of the Sacred Circle, which is that self-determining Indigenous church. So that has gone from a tiny beginning and an idea to a fleshed out reality. It was announced on Transfiguration Sunday and publicly shared, um, were shared two documents, a covenant and our way of life. This sacred circle is seeking full, to be full, a full, equal, but separate governing partner, to develop relations based on an indigenous understanding of law, governance, and ethics. Relational is primary, said Mark McDonald, then National Indigenous Archbishop. Relation precedes organization, a bit of a reversal of the Western way of doing things. He said it's a way of being indigenous, of being self-determining, of acting in a way that will allow us to remain active and vital part of the rest of the Anglican Church. And Donna Bomberry, an, el an indigenous elder who participated in the creation of the covenant and the way of life, said, we need to express our own spiritual renewal as Anglicans. And this is what our way of life is about. It's a healing journey for ourselves, our communities, and our families. It's about renewing relationships with one another and between each other. These two documents are focused on gospel-based discipleship, paralleling val values central to the gospel with indigenous values. And the discussion meetings that were part of the creation of these documents gave rise to a realization, one which Mark MacDonald shared with the Anglican Church of Canada, the desire of Indigenous Anglicans to have the Archbishop of Canterbury come to visit Canada, specifically to meet with them. Because the original treaties that were signed were signed by the Crown, Crown representatives, and the Indigenous peoples wanted to hear from a representative directly of the Crown, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and so um, MacDonald and the primate, Linda Nichols, reached out to Archbishop Justin Welby, who is well known for his dedication about reconciliation among many Indigenous rites in the whole Anglican Communion. There are millions of Indigenous Anglicans across the world in the Anglican Communion. That was the good news. Of course, just before Justin Welby came to visit, 
Archbishop McDonald resigned from his position due to acknowledged sexual misconduct. As our primate wrote, this was devastating news. The sense of betrayal is deep and profound when leaders fail to live up to the standards we expect and the boundaries that are set. A consequence of this was that when the Archbishop of Canterbury arrived weeks later, the direction and guidance of both the Anglican Church and the Sacred Circle understandably was distracted and possibly not there in its fullness because while he made a detailed and complete apology on behalf of the Church of England and the Crown, his other remarks seemed to have been made in a vacuum. He wasn't fully informed about the steps on the journey we are already taking. He, he didn't know why apologies hadn't been made before this. He spoke as if we weren't already working with Indigenous peoples in Canada as the Anglican Church and making steps, as I said, on this journey. But there is a wonderful article in our Anglican Journal. We have copies of it in the church. It's also available online. It was written by Sidney Black, who is acting as the interim National Indigenous Archbishop right now until a new one is elected. And I'm going to quote a little bit. I, I, I encourage you to read the article in its fullness, but I'm going to quote a little bit from the article. He starts by thanking the Archbishop of Canterbury for the apology and for briefly accompanying us on this journey. And then he says this. We do hope that he also recognized that Indigenous Anglicans have embarked on our own journey of self-healing. We are exercising our right to self-determination within the Anglican Church of Canada through the building of the Indigenous Anglican Church, the Sacred Circle. We are building a new church and it is fueled by the tragic mistakes of the past. This self-governing assembly of Indigenous Anglicans is focused on healing and reconciliation spiritual and cultural recovery and practice. Regretfully, Canadian media failed to report on this aspect of our story. Sidney Black goes on to mention the two apologies, the one in 1993 and then the one in 2019 specifically for spiritual harm done. And while apologies will not undo the harm, they are a step on the healing journey. Also, uh, during the Archbishop's time here, no mention was made of the almost $13 million of Anglican share of restitution payments that was made promptly and in full, nor additional financial support through the Indigenous-run Anglican Healing Fund, over $7.5 million, and uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Primates World Relief Development Fund, for Indigenous-led programs in language, culture, midwifery, water purity, youth engagement, and international Indigenous connections. And the Anglican Foundation, hundreds of thousands of dollars for Indigenous ministry projects of healing, reconciliation, language revitalization, translation, and urban Indigenous ministry projects. You, if you were listening to the media, know that a lot of questions were asked. Why weren't we doing this? Why weren't we supporting language revitalization? The answer is, we are. But the Archbishop of Canterbury was not informed of that. So he said, I don't know. Read the article in its fullness. Our steps on this journey, it's important that you heard indigenous-led, indigenous-led, indigenous-led. We are facilitating and supporting we are not leading. It is up, we being settlers, it is up to the Indigenous Anglicans to lead. And it goes beyond financial. Changes to the structure of church governance, worship, and concrete reconciliation initiatives, these are critical to walking forward together. Sidney Black continues, we are on the right path. The Anglican Church is served by nine Indigenous Inuit and Métis bishops and many clergy urban and non-urban. The indigenous spiritual ministry of Mishamikowish is the first indigenous diocese with structures and programs expressing indigenous self-determination within the Anglican Church of Canada and is one example of a possible way forward. He does mention other programs. And then he concludes, 
We know we still have a long journey ahead as we work toward establishing right relations within the Anglican Church of Canada. Our goal is not to create two separate silos within the church, rather to develop a robust family of relatives where we learn from each other, where our cultural and spiritual practices are belatedly respected and nourished within the Anglican Church family in Canada and throughout the communion. In the Gospel today, we heard Jesus speaking challenging words that were difficult for those who followed him to hear. They were words that challenged the traditional understanding of faith, of relationship with God, and how they were to conduct their lives. Today, we can often, as settlers, find it difficult to listen, to continue to listen to the stories of what happened in the past and what it continues to happen. But we are called to not turn back or turn away, but to stay, to listen, to pray, and to follow the direction of our Indigenous Anglicans and their challenging words for justice and equity. We will continue our journey alongside them in this journey of reconciliation. It is not over. It has just begun. We are making progress. And despite the only two real failings of our leaders, be they Indigenous or other, those failings can lead us to discouragement and to lose hope. But we are called not to lose hope. And remember the words of Peter. And I just love Peter. He either gets it 100% right or 100% wrong. There's no halfway with this man. And when Jesus turned to him, and I think you can hear the discouragement and the disappointment in Jesus' voice when he turns to the 12 and he says, do you also wish to go away? Do you want to turn back too? And Peter says, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. So today we too know this and we follow imperfectly in our frail mortality our Lord of life who is loving and forgiving. Thanks be to God. We continue to support Indigenous people in word, in prayer and action. We continue to travel on this healing journey together following the Lord, who is the Lord of life and has the words of eternal life. Amen. I invite you to stand if you are able and join me as we say our sentence of affirmation of faith together. We believe in the, in the love, love of God, God embodied in the person of Jesus, spread through, through the cosmos by the Holy Spirit. And you can remain standing if you're able for the prayers, or you may sit. They're a little long. You might need to sit. Creator and Redeemer, as we approach you in prayer, make us walk in beauty and balance. Make us open our hearts and minds. Make us speak the truth, we pray first for your community, the church, the body of Christ. We pray for all our relatives in the circle of life throughout all creation, for those chosen to be our leaders and teachers. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, you call upon the earth, our mother and home. Stop, Heidi, sorry. Christ. We're just not. Try now. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. We call upon the earth, our mother and home, with its beautiful depths, soaring heights, and deep waters, its vitality and abundance of life. And together we ask that it teach, teach us, us and show, show us, us the way. We call upon the mountains and tundra, the high green valleys and prairies filled with wild flowers, the snows, the summits of intense silence, and we ask that they Teach, teach us, us and, and show, show us, us the, way. the way. We call upon the land which grows our food, the nurturing soil, the fertile fields, the abundant gardens and orchards, and we ask that they 
teach us and show us the way. We call upon the forests, the, green, the great trees reaching strongly to the sky with earth in their roots and the heavens in their branches, the fir and the pine, the cedar and the maple. We ask them to teach us and show us the way. We call upon the creatures of the fields and forests and the waters, our brothers and sisters, the wolves and deer, the eagle and bear, the great whales and the fish. We ask them to teach us and, and show, show us, us the way. way. We call upon those who have lived on this earth, our ancestors and our friends, who dream the best for future generations, and upon those whose lives our lives are built. And with thanksgiving, we call upon them to, to teach, teach us, us and, and show, show us, us the way. way. Creator, you made the world and declared it to be good. The beauty of the trees, the softness of the air, the fragrance of the grass speaks to us. The summit of the mountains, the thunder of the sky, the rhythm of the waters speaks to us. The faintness of the stars, the freshness of the morning, the dew drops on the flower speak to us. But above all, our heart soars for you speak to us in Jesus Christ, in whose name we offer these prayers. Amen. Amen. For all that separates our hearts from God and from all that closes our eyes to God's love, for what we have done, left undone, and for what has been done on our behalf. For the pride that prevents us from forgiving others as we have been forgiven. Together. Jesus, Jesus forgive, forgive us. us. Create, Create in, in us clean hearts, hearts O God, God and, and renew, renew right, right spirits spirit within, within us. us. Creator, enrich you with grace and nourish you with many blessings. Creator, defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. Creator, accept your prayers and absolve you for your offenses. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Together. Creator, Creator, great spirit, spirit holy one from, from whom all holiness comes, remember us, your children, your, your little ones. Let, Let not our ears grow deaf to your voice, but, but open them to hear your voice in the wind. Let not our eyes grow dim with sin, but, but open them to see your gifts in all creation. Let, Let not our hearts grow cold with bitterness, but soften, but soften them to, to grow, grow in brightness and strength, to grow, to grow in love for you and all your creation. Guide our footsteps that we may walk in a straight path in truth and kindness. Bless our hands that we will always reach out with love to one another. Bless us with wisdom to follow the right directions so that we may have the courage we need to face the sunrise and the sunset as we strive to complete our circle. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace. As we are preparing the gifts, we will sing Draw the Circle Wide.
Creator, you bless us with many good gifts returned to you from your creation. Feed us with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. God the Creator is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God the Creator. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to offer our thanks and praise. God the Creator, our great Spirit, from the depths of our hearts we give you thanks. We say thank you, now and forever. From the place of the rising sun in the east, to the south where the warm wind blows, from the west where the soft rain comes, to the coldness of the north, we unite with all creation from the four directions to join in the everlasting thanksgiving and praise for the gift of Jesus Christ. With hearts lifted, we join with the angels, the guardian spirits, the saints, and all our ancestors as we say, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. O great Spirit, our Creator from all, whom all holiness comes, we come before you again today, just as in generations past, like our grandmothers and grandfathers, we come to worship you and acknowledge your greatness. We marvel at your creation. You sent Jesus into creation because people had turned away from you and no longer loved each other, bringing death and destruction. Sharing our living and dying, Jesus opened our eyes and our hearts to understand that we are all relatives and that you are our great spirit, the Creator. Stretching out his arms on the cross, he became the perfect offering for all, uniting in beauty all that is with all that has been and with all that ever will be. Can I ask you to hold the... On the night Jesus was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. <laughs> Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In this ceremony which Jesus gave us, we celebrate our salvation. In our offering of praise and thanks, we stand in the memory, strength, and love of Jesus' death, resurrection, and ascension. Remembering, we make our offering. By your Holy Spirit, make our gifts holy, so that they may be spiritual food and drink. Make us holy, so that we respectfully receive this feast and serve you in each other. Surrounded now by our ancestors, Mary and Megaboa, David Okerhader, Katiri Tekakawitha, Black Elk, Molly Brandt, Henry Budd, James Seti, and all the saints and all the angels with the heavenly community which gives you worship forever. May we also live in unity and live as relatives to all. 
united in Christ with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven. We worship you, God the Creator, our Great Spirit, in songs and dance of infinite praise, blessing, honor, and glory be yours here and everywhere, now and forever. Amen. Now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer. And uh, what I'm going to suggest is I will read um, uh, the East James Bay Cree, lovingly translated for us by uh, Margaret Lemaire, one of our parishioners. I'm going to read it in Cree, and I'm going to then signal with my hand and ask you to read the sentence in English, uh, at, or the, the line in English, and then I'll read the next line and you'll repeat. Okay? Here we go. Noctawi nan chichiji shuk chatan. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Chichiji shai takinao chitsin kao son. Thy kingdom come. Chicho chimaon chiko tichipio. Thy will be done. Chitatai ta maon chai titito tai kno on earth as it is in heaven. Ut es chi ch muyam chi ch chi shukt. Give us this day our daily bread. Minan nak notch kash siketch ch o chi ji ma si etch. And forgive us our trespasses. Wapai timonan no ween to donan. Forgive those who trespass against us. O chijinch kawin tato imich. And lead us not into temptation. Aquimak itotinan nadaka gotch ego yich. But deliver us from evil. Mikmita koinamonan naka mayadich. For thine is the kingdom. Wash chi ish tibi o ashin scho kama oin. The power and the glory, kie kischon, forever, kie shtai takosin, and ever, moish kajich. Amen. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Shall never thirst. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. You who have been to this sacrament often and you who have not been for a long time. You who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay. With all of you joining us virtually, I will pray the prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people, at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, together. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our leader, you are the Son of the Creator. Today we became your children. Today we became your grandchildren. We will live as you have taught us. We will follow your commandments. Watch over us. Speak to us from the trees, from the grass and herbs, from the breeze, from the passing rain, from the, the passing, passing thunder and deep, and deep waters. waters. Before, Before us there, there is beauty. Behind us there is beauty. Allow us to walk along life in happiness, happiness completed in, in beauty. beauty. Amen. Amen. Oh, in a good Anglican fashion, you can be seated again. I've got a couple of announcements before <laughs> the blessing and closing hymn and dismissal. Um, so thank you so much for being with us today and for putting up with us trying to figure out how to do this safely and and celebrate outside in this beautiful on this beautiful beautiful day we are going to have a bazaar this year it will be a smaller bazaar in that it will only be on the main floor of the building and we will not be offering lunch so that will enable us to um, put all the um, uh, areas tables out that we are going to do we will not be doing the books or the white elephant so a suggestion has been made and I think it's a good one to um, have a fall outdoor garage sale 
um, which would have books, not organized the way they up there, just on a table, or two or three, um, and um, things, all kinds of things, like the white elephant could come. And we are also looking at the possibility of having people in the community setting up a table as well. So for that, we need coordinators. We have two coordinators for the bazaar. But if the fall um, outdoor garage sale is going to go ahead, we need two coordinators. If you think you might be interested in finding out more, just finding out is not a commitment. Be not afraid. <laughs> but if you think you might be interested, please let me know um, and or let Susan know at the office and we will reach out and we will see we've got some plans, we've got some ideas, we'd like to hear the ideas you have as well. Uh, social time will be outside today in the, in the um, Litchgate area. Lemonade, water and cookies will be served. Uh, remember, keep distance even though we're outside with no masks on and there's a lovely breeze blowing, just remember that. And I will remind you again um, that we do have many boxes of COVID testing kits available. The Western Ottawa Community Resource Centre has given us hundreds of these kits for us to give out. So if you'd like to take one for yourself, your family or a neighbour that you think uh, might benefit, please do. Um, Ian very kindly brought 15 or so to Sean in the trailer park and he's diligently given them out and he asked me today could he have a hundred more. I said maybe 15 more and we'll, <laughs> we'll go in, in, in bunches but um, please don't hesitate to take one if, uh, if you think yourself or someone you know could use one. So I think those are all, oh, go ahead. I just want everybody to stop and admire the beautiful work that our children have done in planting the garden this morning. When you go over there for our coffee hour, we could hear them working hard over there and it sounded like it was a lot of fun and I can't wait to go and see what those gardens look like now. Thanks, Tamara. Mm -hmm. And thank you too for the children for participating in our opening yeah. prayer. That made it really special. Thank you so much. Here, here. So, okay, stand <laughs> <laughs> for the blessing. Lord, send us anywhere you would have us go, only go there with us. Place upon us any burden you desire, only stand by and sustain us. Break any tie that binds us, except the tie that binds us to you. And the blessing of God, creator who made and knows you, Savior, who redeems and befriends you, and the Spirit, who enlightens and sustains you, be with you this day and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is the Church of Christ in Every Age.
in the name of the light that came into the world, go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.